we're back, and this is Paul Fabrizio. And I'm Don Frazier. And we're going through the Constitution line by line. Line by line. We've gotten all the way to Article 3, mm -hmm. and we're in Section 2, Clause 1, but this time it's Part B. <laughs> yes, indeed. Of many parts. Of many parts. One of the long run-on sentences that are part and parcel of the U.S. Constitution. It's all about clause and effect with this one. <laughs> oh, that was very good. Did you think of that? Just like that. Just All like right. that. It's the caffeine and carbohydrates talking. Oh, okay. What would you have for breakfast? Carbohydrates <laughs> and caffeine. <laughs> okay. I had more protein. All right. Um, oh, we need to announce again that uh, we're using for our clause detection exercise. Yes. Uh, this fine book, A Detailed Analysis of the U.S. Constitution, of the Constitution by Edward F. Cook. So we thank him. This is the seventh edition that we're using here. So our next one, to all cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers, and councils. So the judicial power shall extend to all cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers, and councils. So is this foreign ambassadors to the U.S.? Yes. So the, the judiciary, the federal judiciary, can try cases involving foreign ambassadors? Or is this American ambassadors to foreign missions? No, they would be covered. Oh, this could get very complicated Well, because very quickly. you would think the foreign diplomats would have diplomatic immunity. But where do they get diplomatic immunity? It's from Congress extending to them diplomatic immunity. But... By legislation. By legislation. Okay. And that's, that's standard stuff. So our diplomats in other countries have diplomatic immunity as well. But if, for example, a diplomat got involved in a car accident, there's certainly diplomatic immunity in terms of any criminal procedure. Sure. But insurance still, you've got damages to take care of, that sort of stuff. So this is a federal, a federal court issue. Right. That's in their jurisdiction. Right. Now, there is an exception to that, and that this is things more related to a diplomat on a personal level. If a diplomat is here from another country and they want to get a divorce, that would be something that would be handled at the state level. At the state level. At the state level. Not the federal level. Right. Because the federal level doesn't do divorces. Okay. Yeah, that makes so sense. So it's a state, state issue. So, but for the most part, diplomats have immunity, but there still can be issues that arise, uh, citizenship questions with their kids if they decide to stay here. Again, divorce situations can create all sorts of complications sure, so regarding property. Family law. <laughs> and, and see, a lot of that would be handled at the state level, but some of it would also be at the federal level. Would trick lower because of this yeah. jurisdiction established by the Constitution. Yeah. All right. That's I mean, in, in a certain sense, this is pretty simple. You give diplomats immunity is what has grown out of this. But there's always complications. Yeah. And so somebody needs to be in charge of that. Yes. Somebody needs to cover it because the time to figure out whose jurisdiction is, is not at the moment when you need to find out exactly. <laughs> where the jurisdiction exactly. is. You, you need it. to establish the jurisdiction first. All right. Gotcha. Yes. So this is another one of those nuts and bolts. Yes. Semi clauses. Yes. Which the Constitution has a surprising number, which nobody pays much attention to until you have to. Yeah, because they're the scaffolding. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, well, it's, it's a good image. Okay. So I, that's our line. That's our line. Short and sweet. All right. We'll take the next line up next time. Thanks. <laughs>